let's get into these league specifications here. It does talk about the 4070 initially. So let's kind of get into that. This one's been updated. While there's no denying the enthusiasm around the higher end of 4090 and 4080 and 4070 series cards that offer the best of gaming performance, the RTX 4060 series graphics cards will be designed around the $300 to $400 US segment, which is a mainstream price range that still offers lots of performance at hand. It's simple. The RTX 4090 series will be aimed at users who want the best of, of the best without worrying about the money <clears throat> or the amount of money they are spending. While the RTX 4080 series use that, is aimed at users who want the best performance at the best possible price, the RTX 4070 will be the sweet spot for high-end gaming while the 4060 is designed for the gaming masses at a price that will be hard to ignore given its performance. The previous RTX 3060 was touted to offer a huge improvement over the 2080 Super. The card did end up meeting its promised performance target, but was at most 25 to 30% boost when compared to the 2060 Super. This was mainly due to the fact that the 2060 Super was already an upgraded version of the 2060. But ever since the 20 series, the 30, the RTX 30 got its own TI and non-TI flavors. The RTX 3060 TI was around 30% faster than the 3060, and the 3060 TI was also 30% faster than the 2060 Super, and 40 to 45% faster than the standard 2060. The 3060 non-TI, on the other hand, was around 10% faster than the RTX 2060 Super, and 20% faster than the 2060 non-Super graphics card. So based on the performance, the RTX 3060 Ti was indeed faster, but also more expensive, but still ended up delivering better value versus its predecessor. It was also better for mining pretty significantly than the 3060. For example, the 3060 Ti and 2060 Super both had an MSRP of 399 plus, or but the 3060 Ti offered 30% faster performance. Meanwhile, the RTX 3060 non-TI was $20 cheaper uh, US than the RTX 2060 non-Super, but offered a 20% performance in boost, boost. Since the RTX 3060 never launched with the Founders Edition variant, most of the models retailed at $15 to $20 more that at the end of the day. You were getting the same price as the RTX 2060 non-Super with a 20% uplift. The one thing that NVIDIA did persuade the gaming crowd to get it, its 3060 graphics card equipped with 12 gigabytes of memory versus the 8 gigabytes on the 3060 Ti. That didn't change the performance much since the card featured a lowly 192-bit bus versus the 256-bit bus of the Ti variant, hence why you wanted the Ti variant for mining, right? We should expect similar things with the next generation gaming solution too, but an important factor to consider is that the GPUs are becoming more power hungry and more pricey. It is a trend that might continue into the future as we get better products, but in return there's always a cost to pay for end consumers. So starting with what we know so far, first we should take a look at the brand new Ada Lovelace AD10 X class GPUs that will be powering the next gen GeForce RTX 40 series cards. Starting with the GPU configuration, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4060 series graphics cards may utilize both the AD104 and 106 GPUs. The reason is the same as the situation with the current 30 series, where the 3060 Ti is based on the GA104 GPU and the 3060 is based on the GA106 GPU. We already have detailed the AD104 GPU here, so let's take a look at the 106 GPU and what it has to offer. The GPU is said to measure around 200 millimeters squared and will utilize the TSMC 4 nanometer process node, which is an optimized version of TSMC's 5 nanometer node designed for the green team. The NVIDIA Ada Lovelace AD106 GPU is expected to feature up to 3GPC, 
graphics processing clusters. This is the same GPC count as the GA106 GPU. Each GPU will consist of six TPCs and two SMs, which is the same configuration as the existing chip as well. Each streaming multiprocessor will house four subcores, which is also the same as the GA106 GPU. What's changed is the FP32 and int 32 core configuration. Each subcore will include 128 FP32 units, but combined with the uh, int 32 units will go up to 192. This is because the FP32 units don't share the same subcore as the IN32 units. The 128 FP32 cores are separate from the 64 INT or int 32 cores. So in total, each subcore will consist of 32 FP32 plus 16 int 32 units for a total of 48 units. Each SM will have a total of 128 FP32 units plus 64 int 32 units for a total of 192 units. And since there are a total of 36 SM units, 12 per GPC, we are looking at 4,608 FP32 units and 2,304 int 32 units for a total of 6,912 cores. Each SM will also include two wrap schedules, 32 thread clock per clock for 64 wraps per SM. This is a 50% increase on the cores and the 30%, 33% increase in wraps over uh, wraps per threads versus the GA102 GPU. Moving over to the cache, this is another segment where NVIDIA has given a big boost over their existing Ampere GPUs. The A to Lovelace, Lovelace GPUs will pack 192 kilobytes of L1 cache per SM, an increase of 50% over Ampere. The L2 cache will be increased to 32 megabytes as mentioned in the leaks. This is a 10.6 increase over the Ampere GA106 GPU that hosts just three megabytes of L2 cache. The cache will be shared across the GPU. Finally, we have the ROPS, which will stick to 16 per GPC. You're looking at up to 48 ROPS, the same as the current GA106 GPUs. There are also going to be the latest fourth generation tensor and third generation ray tracing cores infused on Ada Lovelace's GPUs, which will help boost DLSS and ray tracing performance to the next level. Overall, the Ada Lovelace AD106 GPU will offer the same number of GPCs as the GA106, 20% more cores, 50% more L1 cache, 10 times the amount of L2 cache, the same number of ROPs, and fourth generation and third generation ray tracing cores. I think that one of the things to pay attention to uh, as far as specifications is going to be that L2 cache. Previously, NVIDIA really didn't focus on boosting that L2 cache, while AMD has boosted that to optimize, of course, and catch up from the memory bandwidth perspective on G GDDR6 versus GDDR6X. Excuse my tongue, it is getting extremely tired. I am not going to lie. That being said, though, the reason that's important um, is because from the mining perspective, no miners have really, and I'm talking about like actual mining software, none of them have really utilized any of the cache at any given point um, to boost the uh, performance of it on any given algorithm. But with the green team moving, uh, you know, two larger caches, if there is an algorithm um, that comes comes along or miners start or minor develop mining software developers start developing for this in mind in particular you could see a significant boost in the 6000 series uh, from AMD and that would be extremely interesting uh, down the line in my humble opinion do note that the clock speeds, which are said to be at two to three gigahertz range, aren't taken into equation. So they will also play a major role in improving per core performance versus amp here. Now, this is the 4070 stuff. 
Um, I want to get into the specifications on memory. I believe it's coming up here soon. Let's get pricing real quick though. As we saw with the RTX 3060 series, Nvidia can have two distinct configurations of the RTX 4060 graphics cards. We realistically, dude, it is hard to talk. We realistically expect there are two variants, the RTX 4060 and 4060 Ti. The existing generation saw the 3060 Ti and 3060 release a few months apart. And this is known to be the volume segment. So Nvidia will take the advantage to position two solutions, one around 300 to 350 US dollars and one around 400 to 450 US at mainstream gamers right off the bat. Currently, there are, there's no telling if the 8104 GPU will be utilized within the 4060 series. And as such, we will focus on the standard 4060, which will utilize the 8106 GPU. Based on NVIDIA's decision to do a mix of 8104 and 106 or 8106 across its 4060 lineup, we can either see a cut down 4060 or one with a full configuration, whereas the TI can be a cut down 104 configuration. The 106 GPU will come packed with 32 megabytes of L2 cache and 48 ROPs and clock speeds are the two to three gigahertz and they're skipping seven nanometers. So we've kind of already got that figured out. As for memory specifications, this is the big one for mining. The RTX 4060 is expected to rock eight gigabytes of GDDR6X. So it's nice to see that they're going on the 4060 series up from, of course, GDDR6 to GDDR6X. So the speeds are higher. However, here's what is disappointing. It'll come at the faster 20 gigabits per second across a 120 bit bus that is a skinny bus so you're only going to be getting 320 gigabytes of bandwidth which is less than what the 30 series is currently getting with their 192 bit bus on the 60 series now the ti variant if it ends up with an 8104 gpu could offer up to 12 gigabytes of memory across a 192 bit bus interface that would be much better the 4060 graphics card is also said to rock a TGP of 220 watts, which is an increase of 30% over the 3060. And so part of the problem is, is you're getting less memory performance as far as bandwidth, total bandwidth, but you're getting a 30% increase in power, right? Um, that's a massive TGP increase and the performance needs to be really good. Like they say here, if we're looking at this from a, an efficiency number standpoint and memory intent, intense algorithms, such as Ethereum, Ethereum classic, ergo, and even like uh, pretty much all algorithms have some sort of memory intensive portion to them, right? So it will affect everything across the board to a certain extent. You still have, though, a potential boost in uh, core clock on some, like Flux or whatever those may be, Ravencoin. But this isn't looking good for miners as far as performance goes. And if they add on top of that, uh, you know, light hash rate lock 3.0, man, it really feels like with the ATX 3.0 requirements, higher power consumptions, smaller memory bandwidth, lower memory bandwidth. The 7,000 series seems way more, like on paper, seems way more enticing from the perspective of a mining operation. Uh, that's just what I'm seeing here, right? I'd like to know what you guys think in the comment section and of course live chat as well. And we'll get into that near the end of the show. But as you can see here, here's the 4060 and you're looking at a 128 bit bus. There is still the question out of GDDR6 versus GDDR6X. If it goes to GDDR6, I think that your total bandwidth actually goes lower than 320 gigabytes per second. Plus you're getting a huge boost in power consumption. Right next to it is the 3060 Ti. Uh, and you can see 448 gigabit, gigabits per second, 384 on the 3060. So really you're potentially having a huge cut down in mining performance plus a, a huge bump in power consumption on the 4060. Now this is all rumors, but if any of this is somewhat true at all, 
uh, the 4000 series, especially the 4060, is going to be extremely disappointing for, of course, mining. Now, you do get the 448 gigabytes per second on the 4060 Ti rumored because it does have a 192-bit bus and hopefully GDDR6X. If it has GDDR6, though, uh, it'll be closer to 384, right, for that particular card. <clears throat> Overall, pretty disappointing leaks for the 4060, and I'm not exactly looking forward to it, right? I, I think that, unfortunately, with the direction of the green team pushing away from miners, um, in combination with the change in architecture, I don't think that it's going to be fantastic. I don't know. The pricing could be good, though. But then the pricing on the old cards will come down and really, like, buy the old cards that are going to perform better, right? This would be the first time in a long time where you do get worse performance mining generation over generation. I hope you enjoyed this clip from the Crypto Mining Morning Show every Monday through Friday, 7.45 a.m. Pacific and 10.45 a.m. Eastern Time. You can check out more clips here, or if you're interested in checking out the entire live show, you can check that out down here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Tuesday.